Phone calls often go unnoticed in day-to-day -day life. It's only after someone passes away that they take on an extra meaning. The last known phone calls made by celebrities can be a chilling look at their last days, and here are just a few. Princess Diana entered the public eye in 1981 with her storybook wedding to Prince Charles, heir to the United Kingdom's throne. She was a public figure for less than two decades until her death at age 36 as a result of a car accident in a Paris traffic tunnel in August 1997. In that time, she became a humanitarian, earned a reputation as the People's Princess and had two sons, Prince William and Prince Harry. In the 2017 TV documentary Our Mother Diana, Her Life and Legacy, William and Harry shared rare, intimate and frank thoughts and recollections about their mother. At the time of Diana's death, William was 15 and Harry was 12. On that fateful day, they were enjoying a getaway at Balmoral, the royal family's vacation property in Scotland. Diana placed a call to check in on her boys, but neither prince would have any of it. They rushed to get off the phone as quickly as possible, as they were in the middle of playing with their cousins and they wanted to get back to the fun. Harry recounts in the documentary, And if I'd known that that was the last time I was going to speak to my mother, the things that I would, the things I would have said to her. Whatever the origins of the King of Pop title may be, Michael Jackson sure fit the bill. In the 1980s, he was a record-selling and hit-making machine, moving more than 30 million copies of Thriller and churning out number one singles like Rock With You, Billie Jean, Beat It and Man In The Mirror. However, Jackson fell hard from his cultural pedestal in the 90s and 2000s, beleaguered by numerous allegations of child abuse and an infamous incident where he dangled his baby son out of a window. In 2009, Jackson staged a comeback, announcing a residency at London's O2 Arena. The shows never happened. Jackson died at the age of 50 on June 25, 2009. As reported by the New York Times, Jackson's personal physician, Dr. Conrad Murray, was held liable in the pop star's death. He was found guilty of involuntary manslaughter for overprescribing the singer powerful and addictive pain medications. Jackson's family later filed a wrongful death lawsuit against the comeback concert's promoter, AEG Live. During the 2013 court proceedings, Jackson's 16-year-old son, Prince, testified that AEG executive Randy Phillips showed up at the family's home in Los Angeles and confronted Murray over Jackson. CNN reported, Prince called his father from the security guard shack telephone to let him know Phillips was there. His father asked him to offer Phillips food and drink. They didn't speak again. By the next morning, Michael Jackson was dead. I Love Lucy stars Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz were one of the original, definitive sitcom couples, but they were also married off screen. According to People, the marriage was tumultuous as Desi frequently cheated and Ball once tried to shoot him in the head. They ultimately divorced in 1960. Ball remarried producer Gary Morton and Arnaz to his neighbor, Edie Hirsch but they remained very close friends. As people noted, Ball visited Desi while he lay in a hospital bed with lung cancer in December 1986. Near the end, the progression of the cancer left Desi barely able to speak, but he fielded a phone call from his beloved former wife. According to Stephen Sanders and Tom Gilbert's Desi Lou, the story of Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz, daughter Lucy Arnaz said she held the phone up to her father so he could talk. Lucy recalled, she just said the same thing over and over again. It was, I love you, I love you, Desi, I love you. And referring to one of Ball's upcoming appearances, he replied, I love you too, honey. Good luck with your show. After the breakup of the Beatles, John Lennon's legacy was so secure that he could have disappeared forever to live in bliss with his wife, conceptual artist Yoko Ono. But he kept making music, such as landmark singles like Power to the People, Happy Christmas War is Over, Instant Karma and Imagine. But shortly after releasing the covers collection Rock and Roll in 1975, he retired for five years to be a stay-at-home dad. And that's about when uh, my life changed, really. On the evening of December 7th, 1980, Lennon called his aunt, Mimi Smith, at her home in Liverpool, England. Smith told writer Judith Simons in 1981 that on the call, Lennon had been, quote, witty, funny, bubbling over with excitement, coming over very soon, indicating that he planned to return to the UK for the first time in a decade. 
The next day, Lennon was shot and killed outside his New York apartment building by Mark David Chapman. Lennon was 40. Hollywood's biggest sex symbol and blonde bombshell of the 1950s and early 1960s, Marilyn Monroe, died a lonely and tragic death in August 1962. The Hollywood megastar was found dead in the bedroom of her Los Angeles home. Police ruled that Monroe's death was a probable suicide. Authorities also noted that Monroe was discovered with a telephone receiver in her hand, indicating that she'd made at least one call in her final hours. Police reports indicated Monroe's final call was to actor Peter Lawford, who was married to Patricia Kennedy, sister of President John F. Kennedy. There have been many theories surrounding Monroe's death, some of which were explored by the Killing of Marilyn Monroe podcast. As the series notes, Monroe's rumoured connections to both John F. Kennedy and Robert F. Kennedy didn't seem to end well. The brothers were afraid the alleged affairs would ruin their reputations. Some accounts suggest this made her call Lawford. As Monroe's biographer, Lois Banner, stated, She was planning to hold a conference the next Monday and reveal what the Kennedys had done to her. Monroe historian Dan Forth Prince alleged she told Lawford that... If JFK didn't fly down to see me and talk things over, he'll hear from me at my press conference Monday morning. It'll make headlines around the world. Elvis Presley helped popularise rock and roll in the 1950s with his swinging hips and undeniable swagger on songs like Don't Be Cruel and Hound Dog. He had retreated into a casual life by the 1970s, spending most of his time hanging out at his Memphis estate, Graceland. There, he surrounded himself with loyal employees and friends, as his one-year marriage to Priscilla Presley had ended in divorce in 1973. Elvis then proposed to girlfriend Ginger Alden in January 1977. In the early morning hours of August 16, 1977, she was in a Graceland bedroom with Elvis's only child, daughter Lisa Marie Presley. Elvis had been up all night having attended a late-night dental appointment and then consuming a slew of prescription drugs and unable to sleep, he headed to the bathroom with a book. That's where Elvis spent his final moments. After he was found unresponsive, he was rushed to a hospital where he was pronounced dead. According to author and Elvis compatriot Chris Hitchens, one of the rock star's last phone calls placed on the day before he died was to ex-wife Priscilla. Hitchens stated, During that call, they'd argued over travel arrangements for Lisa Marie. It had been a tense conversation, but at least they were on speaking terms. Only a few NBA players can stake a claim to the title of greatest of all time. Among them are five-time champion and 18-time All-Star Kobe Bryant and four-time champ and 16-time All-Star LeBron James. In January 2020, shortly after joining Bryant's old team, the Los Angeles Lakers, James passed Bryant for third on the NBA's all-time scoring list. It was a watershed moment, both professionally and personally. After he topped Bryant by scoring his 33,644th point, James said... I'm just happy to be in any conversation with Kobe Bryant, one of the all-time greats to ever play. Bryant congratulated James on Twitter, saying, Continuing to move the game forward, King James. Much respect, my brother. After the game, Bryant reached out with praise once more. According to The Athletic, the two legends spoke over the phone, with many of James's Lakers teammates listening in. Tragically, the next morning, Kobe, his daughter Gianna and seven other people died in a helicopter crash en route to a youth basketball game. In the 2010s, DJs were the new rock stars, lording over massive gatherings of dancers with their laptops full of irresistible beats. Few were as popular and famous as Avicii. The Swedish electronic dance musician, real name Tim Bergling, scored some anthemic radio hits like Levels and Wake Me Up. Off stage, Avicii suffered. He was diagnosed with pancreatitis at age 21, which he attributed to heavy alcohol consumption. While on vacation in Oman in April 2018, Avicii took his own life at the age of 28. In the hours before his death, Avicii reached out to his relatives via a long-distance phone call. A source close to the burgling stated, The family realised that it was really bad and that one had to act. One of Avicii's relatives immediately boarded a plane to Oman, but by the time it landed, the musician was dead. After breaking up in the 90s, iconic Seattle grunge band Soundgarden reunited in the 2010s and toured throughout the decade. 
The band's final show with charismatic, powerfully piped singer-songwriter Chris Cornell came on May 17, 2017. Sadly, none of the fans in attendance knew that this would be the singer's last night on earth. The frontman went to his hotel room immediately after the show. He placed a check-in phone call with his wife, Vicky Cornell, and to her, Chris, a recovering substance abuse addict, spoke with an alarmingly slurred tone. After he hung up, Vicky called Soundgarden's bodyguard, Martin Kirsten, to perform a wellness check on her husband. Kirsten had to break down Chris's hotel room door, and then a suite door, where he discovered the singer on the bathroom floor, unresponsive and not breathing. Chris Cornell was pronounced dead at age 51, and authorities ruled the death a suicide. If you or anyone you know is having suicidal thoughts, please call or chat online with the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 1-800-273-TALK. That's 1-800-273-8255. Or text HOME to the crisis text line 741-741.